Hello all, welcome back. All right, so this small tutorial is about making charts in Excel. Um, we're going to talk about how to pick the right chart, how to insert the charts and select data in Excel, how to polish it off, how to uh, make it look pretty, and how to paste it into Word. So we're going to cover these four topics. Okay, so talking about charts, um, there's a lot of different charts. You've got, I don't know, 30, 40 different types of charts. There's line charts, uh, scatter charts, uh, spider webs, uh, column, etc., etc. There's a whole range of different kind of charts you can do. And so at some stage, you're going to ask yourself, well, which chart is best to display the data and the trend that I really want to highlight? And so this, this little chart here is a chart about choosing a chart. Uh, is a really nice thing done by uh, by someone on the web. Um, here's a link to the website where I found it at, and there's a few little extra explanations on there that are really worth having a look at. So I highly recommend you direct your browser to that, have a look at it, and then maybe come back. Okay, so assuming you've had a look at that and you've come back, this is the chart then. So this helps you choose. You start in the middle here, and it basically asks you, what would you like to show? Would you like to show a relationship? Um, you know, is of one data correlated with another? Would you like to show comparison? Say you have different groups and you want to see how the groups compare. Would you like to show distribution? How does one set of data, how is one set of data distributed? Would you like to show the composition? What is the data made up of? And then you follow through asking those questions. So um, let's, let's apply it. The best way to, to learn something is to apply it. So here's the example of height and forearm we had from one of our earlier tutorials. Uh, so if I've got forearm and height, and really what I want to highlight with the data is that there's a relationship between the two, that the length of the forearm is dependent uh, or predictable based on the height of the person. So if I come back to here, what would I like to show? Well, a relationship. Do I have two variables or three variables? In this case, I have two. I have the forearm length and the height. So this chart suggests running a scatter chart. All right, let's go do that. So I'm going to go back here, insert. And here are all the charts. The one I want is this one here, scatter, scatter chart. It inserts a blank chart. Um, you can pre-select the data, but I prefer controlling things manually. So I've inserted a blank chart. And then this is open the new tool here with chart tools with two options, design and format. I'm going to go in design, select data. And I'm going to grab the data that I want. So my X data will be the height. And my Y data, my dependent variable, will be the forearm length here. Excellent. So here's my data. Not very exciting yet, right? There's a lot of wasted space. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ch change the axes so that I, I can really focus on the region where things are happening here. So right-click on one of the axes. I'll start here. Click on Format Axis. That'll open up a menu on the right here. And usually it's a contextual menu, so it opens up where you want it. But basically, you're looking at Axis Options uh, and then Axis Options. And I want to go from, say, 20 centimeters to 34. Perfect. Left click on this axis, it'll change up here. And now I want to go from maybe 150 to 210. Great. That's much better. I'm really looking at the data much. I've spread it out. I can see a lot more. Um, now remember, what I'm trying to do with this relationship chart is to highlight the relationship, the, the, the correlation between height and forearm length. So one great way to do this would be to add the line of best fit. In Excel, very easy to do. Just right click on any of the data sets, click on add trend line. You want the linear trend. And I want to display the equation in the R squared. The R squared is a measure of how well the line fits the data. And here we go. Great, that looks really good. Um, now, there's still a few problems with this graph. First is I have no idea what the units are. So I'm going to need to go back and add unit titles. Uh, sorry, axis titles. So right, you know, left click anywhere on the white background of your chart. That'll open up your chart tools again. And click on Add Chart Element, Axis Title. And you want to add the horizontal axis title. So that's length in centimeters. And the vertical axis title, which in this case is four, whoops, four arm in centimeters as well. Great. That's looking much better. Um, now remember, in science, table title top 
and figure is the opposite. So figure title should be at the bottom. Um, Excel by default puts titles of figures at the top. I think that's probably what they do in business. It's not what we do in science. So get rid of that ugly title at the top. Highlight it and then click delete or backspace. Uh, you will put it, don't bother putting it in Excel. When you paste this figure into Word, you'll put the title underneath in Word. We'll do that in a minute. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Not common, again, in scientific publication to have the, the, the crisscross over. So I'm going to click, left click on one of those vertical lines and then click delete on my keyboard. Left click on one of those horizontal lines, delete on my keyboard. There. That's looking very much like a scientific graph. The font's a little small, so I actually left click on the graph, go to home and increase the font to maybe 12. It's a little better. Perfect. That's that figure done. Now, I'll look at a few other figures first, and then we'll paste this into Word and, and format it into Word. Second set of data I want to look at is, this here is, uh, say, all lab quiz marks for the whole class. Now, what would I like to show? Well, I only have one set of data, so obviously not a relationship. Um, I, I don't know, I don't have any information on composition. I don't want to compare it with anything, but I want to look at a distribution. Is this a test that was easy for many students? So there's a, a large number of students who had a high grade, or it wasn't a really hard one, so there's a larger number with a low grade, for example. So I want to do a distribution. I have a single variable, just a mark, that's all I have. And I have few or many, I have many data points. I have a lot of students in the class. So I will now use a line histogram for this. So I could go in and do my line histogram. Okay, I'm going to pause here. Uh, because I'm running out of time on this tutorial. Uh, please uh, follow it up uh, in the link underneath to get to the second part of this tutorial.